Hey, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Hey, Man, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. How you doing, dude? Good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Once again, I just want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who is listening and watching this podcast. We uh, we really appreciate it, all your support. All the new people are here, here and the people who have been here before. Thank you for coming and spending your time with us. I know you have a ton of choices when it comes to podcasts and for your entertainment. And so the fact that um, we're on your list is super cool. So thank you all so much for being here. Yeah, If you could, um, you know, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you haven't already, um, leave us a comment, leave us a review. Uh, wherever you're watching or listening, that would be amazing. That is how it helps us out, guys. Um, anything that you can do, um, because right now we're not running ads and we're not um doing a lot of uh, um a lot of that stuff um during the show. So what we would ask if you could help us out, just tell a motherfucker. Facts. You know what I mean? If yep. you're having a good time here, tell somebody. Um, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Um, and, um, yeah, we will be in, when this one comes out, we'll probably be in the UK. Correct. Um, and so we'll be in the UK when this comes out. Uh, we are filming it a couple weeks in advance. Uh, I, I love your outfit. Thanks. I, I do love, and you, you found this before me, but the, um, I don't care what I wear out. The freedom of just like, I'm going to wear this. Yep. Yep. I'm in a shirt that says, let's summon demons. Um, and it's got pentagrams all over it. Yeah. That's and I'm also in a Winnie the Pooh uh, headband. Now, for those of you listening and not watching, the it is a... a um, it, it's a bunch of kids. It's not as demonic as you no, no. think it is, the, but it's still... The, the, artist, the artist, his name is Stephen Rhodes. And so he's got a bunch of weird, like weird t-shirts like this, but it's all like kids. Yeah, that doesn't so, make it better. No, but it, it takes away the little a little bit of the It does? Yeah, because like they're like, come on. If you I mean see they are it, smiling. Here's the that's thing. That's what I'm saying. If they're you smiling. when you look at this t-shirt, it doesn't make you feel scared. You're like, that's kind of yeah. weird, kind of funny, but also kind of cool. Except I would say, tell you this. Creepy kids like Pet Cemetery, Children of the Corn, The Shining. Shining, Exorcist, that yeah. shit. Creepy kids fucked me up. Dude, that new Exorcist that's coming out looks so... Dumb, right? Dumb. Dumb. And scary. It's out already, and I hear it eight dicks. Shocker, that, but it looks scary as shit. Yo, dude. Conjuring, scary. Conjuring was so scary. I'm going to tell you right now, for me, the creepiest kid in the history of creepy kids. Ooh, tough one. The original Pet Cemetery. When that creepy fucking kid was hiding under the bed and took this little knife and cut this dude's Achilles. Hey, yo, but I will tell you this. That original Pet Cemetery, did you see that? No. There is a scene. Did you see the original? Where that woman with spina bifida or whatever crawls out of the corner with her back all hunched over like a fucking... I nearly shit myself <laughs> in the theater. You know I jazz handed up. Yo, dude, that original Pet Cemetery for me, as far as creepy kids, is there any creepier? My arms are getting smaller. I haven't worked that in a while. Um, I don't, and, creepier uh, kids, I don't know. I mean, like, they're in that what, an Evil Dead, not the most recent Evil Dead that came out, but yeah. what, look, I'll sh look, this is this is the photo. When I think of Evil Dead, this is the photo I think of, and every time I just I, nope. Am I missing a creepy kid, Matt? Which one am I missing? Oh, the ring. Oh, good one. Yeah. Yeah, the that, but you know what? That the pet cemetery, Spina Bifida, and that the fucking whatever his name was, Clyde. What his name wasn't Clyde. That was the orangutan, and every which way but loose, every which way but win, every which way but some, but loose. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. By the way, Clint Eastwood. Just so you know, I know you probably don't know this, but he was about. Yeah, that's not great. What is that? Yeah, exactly. What is that from? It's from Evil Dead. Yeah, but what's the movie? Because in order for you to be a creepy kid that affects me, the movie has... That's like, if a creepy kid was on Saw, nah, that even, wouldn't affect nah, me because I think those movies are so fucking dumb. Nah, this kid's a demon, legitimately. Yeah. Like, but was the movie okay? Dude, uh, scary? Bro, that Evil Dead has one of the craziest intros. Have you seen Evil Dead, Matt? 
Uh, so not the most recent one that came out, but the one right before that. I think it came out in like 2013 or 14 or something like that. Yeah, the remake of the original. Has one of the craziest intros fucking ever. Like it starts out with this 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 guy. It's like this dad. He's in the basement of this house, and uh, they take off this this uh, bag off this girl's head. She's tied to a post, and she's like freaking out. She's like, "What's happening? Like, what what's wrong?" And it's just like her dad and these three. I don't know these three like weird like Amish looking people, but they obviously know what the hell is happening. And this her the daughter's like freaking out. She's asking where her mom is. She's probably like 17 or 18 in this movie. And the dad is like, your mom is, your mom's not here. Like you, you killed your mom. She's like, she's like, no, I didn't. She's like, yes. And he's like, yes, you did. And she goes, she goes, but, but daddy, I just, I just want to be as close as possible. And I want to crawl into your skin. And then it cuts away and it looks at him and then it cuts back to her and she's completely changed face. She's got this demonic look. And she's screaming. It's, it's called Evil Dead. Evil Dead. And she's screaming. She's like, she's like that. Like, uh, I don't know the exact words, but she's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skin you just like I slit that dumb horse throat. And she's like screaming, and she's all demonic. And then all, and then the the weird Amish woman is like, we have to end this now. What weird Amish? Remember, woman? I told you there's like three other oh, weird yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah, in the yeah, room, yeah. but they yeah. obviously know what's happening with the the demon and whatnot. Yeah. And so, and she says, we have to end this now. And the dad says, I'm so sorry. And this demon is still going nuts in his daughter. And then they drop a match at her foot. They light her on fire. That's and the beginning of the movie. Beginning of the movie. And then she's like, the demon is like laughing, but screaming at him through this. And then the demon is like, it's like screaming. He goes, I'll see you in hell. And then the dad is like, I'm so sorry. And then blows her head off with a shotgun. That's the beginning. It's the first four minutes of the movie. It is. But even from that, I literally, I was with friends and I was like, yeah, I'm going to bed. See you guys later. Like I, I couldn't watch the rest of it. I watched, I did come back out and watch like 15 minutes of it. I got to that part where that little girl kind of like that. pops out. Yeah. And she's like, ah, no, nah, that fucking movie freaks me out. The I, new one though. Remember we saw the trailer for it during cocaine bear. No. Yeah. Yeah. That crazy one. So that's, that's evil dead rise. The one right before that That was the one with the mom. Yeah. Yeah. I really do want to see that. That I nope. that I will say though, hey, there's one dude. line. There's one line from that. Yeah. From that preview where the little girl is like mommy. And she goes, and she kind of peeked over the bathtub. And she goes, yeah. mommy's with the maggots now. Yeah. And then it just, ex Oh my God. Can I tell you what fucks me up? That. A creepy shot through a peephole. Oh my god! Those fuck me up. Yeah, the creepy peephole shots. The people, creepy, creepy people, creepy peephole. Creep, creep, creepy peep, 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 creep hole, creep hole. That was my nickname in high school. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> creep peephole. Creepy, creepy, yeah. creep, no, creepy peephole. Creepy people. Creep people. Creep people. Free people. No, no, no. Creep people. Creep people. Creepy people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but so yeah, but that that same shot with that where the shoot it shoots her through, and the little girl is like, "Mommy, you don't look so good." And she goes, "Nothing a big gold kiss from you won't fix." And then the yeah, daughter unlocks dude. it, and she just reaches through the door. Fuck. Nah, fuck all that. Now, now fuck I, all that. I'm I, good. I'm I want to get back to clothes, but first, let's talk about. Now this is a couple weeks ago, guys. Uh, but we're it's actually yesterday, but it's a couple weeks ago. Correct. By the time you're hearing this, this should have already surfaced on the internet about two weeks prior. But but we this is the day after it surfaced for us. So we're going to talk about it, and then we'll have you guys discuss it in the future as well. Yeah. Now, first of all, you have been an avid Sasquatch. I, you and your mom used to watch that Finding Sasquatch. Finding Bigfoot. Get it show. right. Finding we, Bigfoot. We bought hats. We bought trucker hats yeah, that said I "Finding." Know you guys used no, to no, practice they, your Sasquatch calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> fucking yeah. Crazy. And and the, and the hat said "Gone Squatching." Oh, I wish I still had that God. hat. I'm so bad. You I don't even did. know where that hat I is. I do. Do you? Yeah, you threw it out, man. Oh, you remember all those hats you had? Yeah, that well, was one of the ones you threw out. Oh, it was one of the ones. Yeah. Or like gave to. I didn't throw them out. I gave them to charity. I'm Dude, sure. how many hats did you have hanging on your wall? A hundred. Well, a hanging on the wall, or just in total. Total. One hundred and seventy. It is way less than that. And because, guys, when I used to go away with Larry the Cable Guy, whenever I went to a... Or, or Chelsea, when you just went on tour, period. I would bring him back a, ha a, a sports team hat from that city. And yeah. sometimes with, with Chelsea and Cable Guy... You'd hit different sometimes. cities. 
Like for cable guy, I would do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in, in different all cities. different cities. Yeah, so he yeah. would come home with four hats and same with Chels. So you had a bunch of hats for But a there while. were specific teams that I we didn't buy. Like anytime you went to New York, you didn't buy any New York sports I teams. Did not. Because actually, I take that back. You did buy me one. What was it? It's a Buffalo Sabres hat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that Buffalo Sabres hat is it's dope. fucking cool. It's a it's a black leather yeah. snapback with like blue and yellow. Do you still yellow. have it? Oh, fuck yeah, I do. That was one of the hats I kept. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? Which I, other ones did you keep? Did, I, did you keep a Nuggets hat? I, oh, it's okay. So you remember? So I had a certain design for my room. Like there were like uh, curled brims, like dad hats on one wall, like college football was here and uh, and bas- college basketball was somewhere else. And I had a whole Boston wall. So it was like Celtics, uh, Red Sox, Patriots. Uh, I didn't have a Bruins hat. because I didn't really Celtics care. hat. Yeah, I said, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a bunch of different things. I still have like two or three Celtics hats. And then I had one one wall that was above my TV because it was like my like my mantle. Like this was like what I wanted people to see. I remember. Was all the old school Mitchell and Ness hats that you got me in different cities. That were fire. So like, what what have you kept? All of them. I kept all the old school Mitchell and Ness hats. Oh, you did. So I got the old school. I had like that Buffalo Sabres hat, the old school Eagles, that old school Bucks hat, that all orange one. Oh, that's dope. I got the Nuggets one. Um, I got all of them. That's I, awesome. I don't think I got. I got. I have a cool Atlanta Braves one. I'm pretty sure I have an Expos hat too. Yep, I got you an Expos hat. Yeah, yeah. I never got. I, by the way, petition to bring back the Montreal Expos. Top five. Mm, Top five, great, top five greatest sports logos ever. You know what we should talk about one day, and best, we're not going to do it today. Best sports logos ever. Yes, best sports logos. But Expo, Expos is up there. Yes, and but, the, but yeah, any old go, school Patriots. Um, oh yeah. yeah old, okay, so old Pat for sure. So we, you are a Sasquatch guy. I'm a cryptid guy or a cryptoid guy, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, cryptids and cryptoids. I don't think the Sasquatch is technically. Oh no, technically a cryptid. You know what I'm talking about. Though. I don't like, know what a cryptid is. So a cryptid is like a skinwalker or a mothman or the chupacabra or... Legend. Mythical. Right. But they're called cryptids. Okay. So for me, I'm a big cryptid guy. You know why? Because why the fuck not? But like, why wouldn't he be cryptid? Bigfoot. I don't know. I think he's considered something different. Let me check. But like, this, I think- is, this is the problem I have. So, so the video is... Will we be able to show the video on... Okay. So can we play the video? This is Bigfoot supposedly captured on the side of a mountain in Colorado, right? Yeah. From a train. So let's take a look at this, shall we? Okay. Now, it's already fishy to me. Why? Dude. My name Branson sent us the following video while we were on a Bigfoot expedition. Here is the latest purported Bigfoot captured yeah. on video. Bro, that... Silverton, Colorado. First of all, this appears to be captured from the train that runs between Durango. Here's the problem I have with it. Look at that! That is a dude. No, it is not. In a fucking suit. That is a. But here's my thing. Like, why not just be open to the open to the possibility that that is the missing link between ape and man? Like, why not? Because that's what Bigfoot is. Bigfoot is the missing link between apes and humans. That's that, literally that it. Why not be open well to the possibility that this is what we're looking at? That's my thing. It's like why not not a Debbie Downer, but why always put it into the dirt? Why not just have have a fun looking at it and going, yo, that look at the possibility. Hundred percent walks like a person. It's a missing link between human and oh. apes. That would make sense. Hundred percent walk like a person. That's evolution. And why? Let me ask you this: like, why is he out in the open and not in cover? Why? Is this what? What's with the sitting down? He's trying to camouflage, dude. So how he's trying would to have he, people not see him. How would he know that the, if he if he's so smart, right? This is a this is a mythical creature that's been evading so human. good at evading humans. Doesn't hear a fucking train. Doesn't hear a train. Well, and then I, I, how feel, does, I think how he does, does. But how does? But how does? But he's got. <laughs> he's got to assume that not all trains have people on it. Oh, is that right? I bet you. Okay, and then if maybe this, not, I don't know. And this I'm mythical giving him a creature, benefit of the doubt. This mythical creature knows that he's being filmed, so he sits down. Oh, that is a fucking human. Or maybe he does it every time he sees a train in case there's a possibility of him being seen. But then but why would say, he come out train time? In midday, Man, well, I, oh, you think he has a fucking a schedule of when all the trains come through? We're talking about you. Listen, dude, you it, think he's got a pen and paper out there? Then right why now, the would he be hiding? Why would he be hiding? 
If he's not cognizant of the trains, why is he hiding he's from the train? He's cognizant of the train, but he's not cognizant. He can't tell time. Like he's, he can't How tell do you know? You can't, he can't tell me that it's 1.40 p.m. But he can hear a fucking train coming. Yeah, maybe he was already out on the walk before the train showed up. And then, and so he just fucking just squatted right when this dude has hey, his camera I'm out? not going to lie. Before he had, when he squatted, like before that, obviously you can see where he squats. But if I played you that video from right where he squatted, would you be able to tell me where he was? What's that? Yeah, dude. Of course. Now that you've seen the video, of course, but like it was, he tried to camouflage. He looked like the right color for the side of that hill. That's an animal instinct is to try and camouflage. Yeah. You know what else is the instinct of a human is to know that these people are on a train looking for Sasquatch. I'm going to put my fucking Sasquatch suit on because that's what that was. And I'm going to walk in front of the train. Here's what I'm telling you right now. If this thing exists, which it doesn't, you fucking wackos. Why not? If this thing exists and it has evaded for so long, this is not how it's getting caught. Out in the wide open with no cover. This is a person who knows that the train is coming by. And I would go so far. That looked like a pretty large person, though. Aren't there large people? That looked looked like looked like... A large person. If we went back to the video, dude, it is so clearly a suit. There's zero muscle in the chest, like like a, uh, like a, like an animal would have. Zero muscle in the chest. Long, spindly arms. Zero muscle, dude. Just a tall human in a suit. That's it. No muscle really on the legs. Look at this thing, dude. What? Uh, okay. That does not. You're telling me play, that's play a it, Matt, fucking it, wild animal that with no muscle tone on the legs, loose on the legs, loose, no muscle, loose. Get out of here, dude. No, that not an animal like that. Look, dude, a bear, a deer, a any wild animal is muscle it has muscle definition. There's no muscle. It's a loose. He looks like he's wearing a tiki hut. This is not a mythical, giant, muscular creature. It looks like a hairy dude who used to follow the Almond Brothers. <laughs> That's what he looks like. Matt, is there any way you can slow like how fast it plays, or is that not an option on YouTube? Listen, man, I'm just telling oh, you. Oh, speed, nice. Right now. Yeah, well, you do point five. Uh, yeah, point two five is fine. I'm telling you right now. Look at the no, lack of muscle. Plastic. Dude's kind of got a fat ass, though. I'm not gonna lie. Lack of mu- <laughs> no muscle in the arms. And the big one is no muscle in the legs, no muscle in the booty. Look at those things, dude. A fucking Bigfoot, if that's what it is, well, you're telling me it's a cross between an ape and man, right? It's the missing link between ape and man. Missing link, which walks around all day, makes, lives in the, f- eats whatever the fuck. Look at all the wild animals that have, they have muscle, dude. Fair enough. This is a human in a suit. Fair enough. At least get me a superhero suit. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I'm still believing it's. It's. I will say though, it's a pretty good video. It's, it's a pretty. Fun. It's a pretty fun. good video. It's fun. <sighs> it is fun, but it's so clearly not. There's also there's also another cryptid called the Wendigo. You ever heard of that? No. I, I think the Wendigo is the one that starts out as a human, but he gets the like the human gets possessed by some sort of demon, and then that person then becomes a cannibal and he starts eating and starting to feed on other humans and yeah. other flesh. And then he turns into like this giant, uh, giant, like, like deer humanoid. It's yeah. Weird thing. But dude, even deer you ever muscle. Seen, you ever seen that? Muscle there's there's a, a movie, fucking deer. movie called antlers. It's about a Wendigo. Fucked. I might watch it. Weird. Very now, weird. Now listen, dude, by the way, that dude in that suit gives me the same vibes as your Winnie the Pooh. It's the same. <laughs> it's That's the pretty same. valid. I, I will say this, dude, man. I, I'm so impressed by, although there's some things that you care about, like, oh, you care about that. I shouldn't put it that I way. care about my appearance. You but care the, about your appearance, ah. but I love that you have the confidence. And and I never, I am just I just started getting it where I really was like, I'm a, I bought a jacket, dude. I don't think you saw it yet. But I walked into the store in Fort Worth, Texas. And um, the, it's it's the, they, the the one you wore at the show on Monday. Yeah, the they, one. yeah, they yeah, were yeah. like they were like, hey, this is a woman's coat. And I was like, not when I wear it. It's yeah, not. facts. Give but me what a size did you got? Yeah. 
Exactly. I, I, but I've become, I would have never gone out in anything but like a black t-shirt, jeans, hat, boots. And I've really stretched it out. I, dude, I, I actively, I, I do buy, and, and because I think the idea of something being women's clothes or, or men's, men's clothes, clothes is really so archaic. Yeah. And I, I think it's clothes. I do. I think it's so silly. And I, I think it's a weird hang up to have that you were like, look, the only, a kilt is a skirt, except Produce. it's called a kilt. Yeah. So so it doesn't bother you because it's just given a different name? Yeah. But Do you know a, what I mean? It's definitely a skirt. It's a skirt. 100%. And a skirt is a kilt. Yeah. So like, I don't understand what the big deal is. So I, I, and I'm glad I've finally broken out of that. But you never really had it. How come? No, I don't know, man. I've just always kind of been really comfortable with what I wore. I mean, then again, that might be why the girls I hung out with freshman and sophomore year thought I was gay. Did they? Yeah, I didn't tell you that. No. So when I went to Notre Dame, my, my the freshman, you remember the freshman group of yeah, the group yeah, I had. Yeah, so yeah. it was like uh, a bunch of different people. Um, but yeah, until the end of freshman year, like they 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 were like, yeah, when we figured out you weren't gay when it came to homecoming, and you asked a girl to homecoming. But before that, we we all thought that you were fruity, and I was like, that's okay, sure, like, fruity. Yeah, fruity. I was like, that's a nicer way to put it. But sure, okay. I don't know why. I didn't know what uh, yeah. uh, what energy I gave off, but uh, I think it's mainly the energy that I'm just also comfortable with my sexuality. Yeah. Which is why you and I can openly look at a dude and be like, yo, he's handsome. Yeah, like, we, we do say that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, we I, I, I will say we say it a lot more than I think we should, but I we d- <laughs> but we definitely are comfortable enough with ourselves and each other to know yeah. that if we're calling another dude good looking does not make you No, dude. Gay, we, but, uh, the, the truth of the matter is, is it's just being a yeah, human being. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But so yeah, I don't know. I've I've always kind of been comfortable with wearing bright colors and 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 not only wearing black. Like, you well, know. I wear black, dude, because I sweat. Right, and I get that too. But like, you know, I I've always like remember when those those graphic tees you always had in this color. I'd always be like, give like you. I'd always be like, yeah, I'll take it. Like yeah. I always wear the brighter colors or stuff that really. I'm not wearing things that's defying gender norms. Yeah, but. I'm also not sticking to everything that people would consider as a gender norm. But also, I will say, my girlfriend, Iman, Iman has helped me a lot with that in the last couple of years. Like, before her and I started dating, would you ever see me in public in one of these? No. I never even owned one of these. Yeah. But also, I didn't let my hair go because in that past relationship, I not wasn't allowed to, but practically wasn't allowed to. Yeah. So once I was able to break that and, like, kind of just explore other options of what I was able to wear, like, she opened my eyes up a lot to just, like, things that are that are fine for anybody to wear. Yeah. You know, so, the more it's so interesting. Well, not, it makes complete sense, but the more comfortable I got with myself, it, it, the more I kind of branched out as far as, yeah. because dude, I wore that jacket in LA and got a, it, it was, a, here's how I know I'm wearing something that I am really going to like. It elicits a response. Whether yeah. whether that response is "What the fuck are you wearing?" or "Hey, which, I love that," which I got a lot of. I bet you did. I got a lot of "What the fuck is that?" Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like gay, Woody. It, it, no, dude, I, I love that jacket. No, it's a cool jacket though. I really I like the design. I like the stitching of yeah. it. Like it looked, it looks really good. Yeah, I, I, and, and I'll tell you something else. You know, I I um I I my next move. Is the to in as far as comfortability is just taking off this fucking hat. Yeah, fair enough. I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let Iman uh, uh, do my makeup soon. What do you mean do your makeup? She's gonna do my makeup, but she's gonna like put not put me in drag, but she's gonna like glam me up. She she wants to do my makeup, and then she was like, "I want you to do my makeup," and I was like, "That's okay, but, sure." But are you just gonna hang around the house? Are you gonna go out? Are you gonna- Probably hang around the house. Yeah. She was like, we'll put you in drag. I was like, you're going to put me in a dress? She was like, maybe. I go, you don't have any clothes that'll fit me. I will tell you this, dude. I bet I, you I'd look great in a dress. I'm not, you would look good in a dress. I ain't got nothing wrong to say about I, that. I will tell you this for sure. I 100%, this is, I mean, and I've only worn it now like a three or four times. Uh, and and not like going out, but like for a role or some. But yo, dude, when I when I put eyeliner on, I'm like, okay. Look at those smoky eyes. Eh. <laughs> I fucking love it. Eh. I, love, I wouldn't wear it every day, but yeah, man. That the Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean look? Nope. 
You, not for you. Not for you. How do you know? Because I'm looking at you. Dude, I'm not wearing fucking eyeliner. How yeah, but I can see. the stupidest thing you've ever I said. I can see you. How with are you going to tell me that you don't like the way it looks? And I've you've seen never you seen you with eyeliner it. before. When? When we did that rock and roll photo shoot when I was, for the family Christmas card. When I was wearing a, I was wearing sunglasses. Not the entire time. The you? whole time. Where have I seen you in eyeliner? Did you put eyeliner on for Tussle or was that me? That was me. For Yeah, for which one? Tussle. For Tussle. That was you. That was me. You look good too. You, yeah. I, like, I wasn't crazy about the eyeliner. I like it because it's a kind of a rocker. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't crazy about it. Maybe I just don't like it. I also don't like, like when I have to sit in a makeup chair, ah, like my eyes just water all the time because I'm yeah. like, ah, stop touching my face. God damn it. Yeah. Is it, you, mean, like it. You, you mean as far as to get ready on camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to have the makeup because like- I don't like that either. No, nah, I never really did. I, I, I mean, I don't mind it. It, it, I, I like it takes it because, the bags out from under my eyes because- Yeah, dude. And it takes the know. shine off. But I think that um, I, I would like to go no hat. I, I think you, I'm more ready than the people who watch me. I think my biggest thing with it is that- I don't know if I'd be ready I, for it. I think that it would be distracting at a show. I would agree. So I I don't know exactly how to get past it, except maybe start doing it like a reveal. Oh, no, start doing it like online, so people get used to it. Um, and then I can kind of just slowly do it at the shows. Although the 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 lights on my forehead is gonna be really glaring. Because my upper half of my forehead has had zero sun in thirty years. Right. That that's that's fairy. That, that, that's that's fair. Like right now, when I don't have a hat on, but and it kind of doesn't look that bad. But well, I wear a backwards hat now, so there's a tan right here on the top of my forehead. I'm pretty upset about it. Yeah. When did you start backwards hat? And you know that was my move for a long time. It was your move for a little bit. Can I be honest? I was I was a forward hat for a little bit, and then I rec I realized that both of us were wearing forward hats all the time. So I ran and wearing the same hat and wearing the same hat. So I was like, fuck, I, I guess, I guess I got to be the backwards hat guy now. Yeah. You know, we're, so like, I, I just, I was just like, uh, I just assumed I was not assumed, but I also like wearing a hat on stage. Um, so I, I just, I was like, I can't. And also when I wear my hat, who are you, who are you texting right now? It's just, uh, Iman texted me something about something. important. Okay. That's why I texted her back. Uh, but, uh, uh, usually the hat lower. Like I can't see people can't see my face a lot on stage because yeah. I wear mine a little lower than you and a little more curled. You leave yours up a little bit, so I realize that you can't see my face on stage. So I flip my hat backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole reason why I, I up and back a little bit. And I also I'm I'm a guy, you know me. I have an ADHD brain. I'm fidgety. That's just kind of the person I am. So I know if I'm on stage with no hat on, I'm going to be running my hand through my hair every 37 seconds, mm. and that's going to get distracting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think you should run it through that luscious hair. People are going to like that. Yeah, but I... And I, then slow-mo it. But it's going to bug me knowing I'm doing it every 35 seconds. You should run your hand through your hair in slow motion, and then I, I'll have the DJ play, Oh, yeah. Chica, chica. Yeah, but that that uh, that song... Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, well, that that song where uh, uh, Ferris is right, jumping off the trampoline, and he's jump, jumping over the yard. Yo, dude. <laughs> Ferris Bueller is so good. That's uh, that's Iman's like favorite eighties movie. Uh, yeah, not I, a, by the way, I don't. I feel like there's not a lot of wrong answers for favorite eighties movie. Um, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, there's so I feel like there's so many in that ten in that ten year span that you could say anything from Back to the Future to Breakfast Club to Sixteen Candles to to Ferris Bueller's but, to to uh, uh, National Lampoon. Like, there's so many movies in that decade of eighty. To eighty nine, that are all oh, fucking good. I feel so bad for the generation. You maybe had a few. You did. You had some comedies. You had super bad and all. Dude, that stuff. I had. You did early two thousands. This good God, this generation right now, where movies have kind of taken a back seat. Like they're I going don't, to the movies isn't desirable anymore. There's like, but why for, not? Because there's no fucking good movies out right now. But that's because nobody's going to the movies, dude. No, it's because nobody's making a good movie no, right no, now. No. Oppenheimer and Barbie were the last two that people really went to go. Like, because what happened see. is people just started waiting for him to come home, and people. Here's the movies you're gonna see from here on out: movies that cost a million dollars, 
or movies that cost a hundred million dollars. But any movie in between is not going to be at the theater. It's going to be on Netflix, right? And I think that's also a thing, though. Is like you know, in today's day and age of it's expensive to live. People will ra- would rather wait for it to come for free to watch on their TV for a subscription that they already pay for instead of going to spend $50 on the tickets and the food and drinks included to go watch a movie I get it. around other people, not in your own home. Like I for me, it. I like to wait at home and watch them at home because you know why? I feel like movies were supposed to be enjoyed while you were smoking weed because it's just, I like, I like to enjoy it. If I, if I don't take enough of an edible or anything when I get to that movie, that movie's almost three hours, I'm tired through that second half of it. But I, you know, I, I, like to, I like to enjoy movies in a different way, though, also. so like I disagree. I think it's about the movie. Here's the difference to me always been about movies and TV. And this will tell you how you... Okay, and this is also how movie stars and TV stars were treated in the past. So the difference is this. A TV star is in your home, in your living room, at your house. It's very personal. And when you see people that you, and this is the way it used to be, you would see somebody on TV, they seemed more approachable. Right. Because you, they were in your house. They were on a show called Friends. <laughs> yeah. Right? They were approachable people because you knew them. They were at your house with you every right, night. Right, right, right. A movie... And this is this was the difference between TV stars and movie stars. Movie stars weren't approachable, dude, because this was it was mythical. You were going to somewhere else to turn on a screen larger than life into 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 a mist like a magical world where you were escaping. And right. those people were movie stars. Right. They were look. The difference is if Tom Cruise had been walking through an airport, you would have been like, "That's Tom Cruise." Tom Cruise, that's Tom Cruise. You weren't going to fucking walk up to Tom Cruise. Oh, you know I am. Now. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. The difference is back then, a TV star, Tom Selleck, that's Magnum PI, man. I'm walking up. I know Magnum. Magnum's at my house. Yeah. That's my buddy, man. Are you talking about the Fonz, Henry Winkler? Fuck yeah, that's my D. But my point is, all that has been... and, And I also hate, yo, dude, movie stars be movie stars. Go back to being mysterious and not accessible. I don't want you on Instagram. I want you on TikTok. I want you being Leonardo DiCaprio. I want you being Jack Nicholson. Don't do every fucking interview. Don't go on the fucking view. Maybe do a late night show. Maybe do an interview. But stay mysterious, dude. This is what I loved about movies and movie stars. All that's been taken away with the fact that you don't you're not going to the big screen. And right. all these people are, you know, they're showing you their favorite recipe right. on TikTok. And I'm like, dude, hey, dude, you're fucking Channing Tatum. I don't want to know how you make bread pudding. That's, That's not fair. interesting to me. Yeah. But I love the mystique. I'll tell you the difference also. Like, if you throw comedians into that or now personalities, because we use our first names, um, it's like... That accessibility times a hundred. Right. Because you definitely, you met me on Chelsea lately under the name Josh Wolf. Yep. So everybody feels like they know me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because so, once a week for eight years, you were in their living room every yeah. Tuesday. As me. Yeah. I remember the day also. As me. You were on, you were on every Tuesday. I was on a lot. I was on a well, lot. Well, I mean, when it become like, when you became like that once a week, because you stopped writing on the show, but you were also still there. It was, it was every Tuesday, once a week. Yeah. And then every now and then you'd go in on a Wednesday or a Thursday if they wanted to double dip. Uh, you know who my favorite person to go on that panel was? Coy? No, Ross Matthews. Oh, I love Ross. As long as Ross and I were on together and he would usually sit next to Chelsea, Chelsea and yeah. I would sit on the third seat, yeah. it didn't matter to me who was in that second seat. Yeah. He, he and I had such phenomenal rapport. And you know what, man? You know, we did a podcast together. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Okay. And Josh and Ross. Yeah, Ross for those Josh, guys. Whatever it was? Yeah, it, 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 it was basically he said, he said. And I'll tell you something, a couple things about him and about that show in general. You can still go, guys, download it. It's a phenomenal show. Three things stick out. One, the first day we're there, I'm sitting down. I get there before him. He's such an alpha, Ross Matthews. Is he? Oh, my fucking God. He yeah, wa- now that I think about it, I was watching RuPaul the other night and he did make a top joke. No, no, it's not. That, but I'm not talking about top. No, no, but it, it, never mind. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I know what a top is, but, yeah, but he, that's not the joke. He... He's like an alpha male. 
Well, yeah, never mind. I, I think my my joke made sense, but I don't think you were seeing it. In oh, okay. context. <laughs> my joke because if you look at a top and a bottom, the oh, top right, right, is right, the right, alpha. Right, That's right, why. Right, got it, got it. Yeah, that my joke made sense. It was yeah, there. Okay, like, yeah, got it, got it. Got a thinker on that one. Um, <laughs> but he uh, he walked in and he looked at me and he goes, "You're in my seat." And I said, "What?" He goes, "That's the A mic. You sit where the B mic is." <laughs> And I was like, what? He was like, I sit where the A mic is. You sit where the B mic is. And That's I, and I was like, super funny. Okay, Ross. Yeah. yeah, yeah I go, you got it. That's super funny. Number two with Ross Matthews. I love that. I used to love pranking him. I made him think. I made Jonathan go down into the garage. My brother, Jonathan. And we used to have call-ins. And I said, call in like you're down there. Just describe what's in Ross's car describe his car. And it was, it was after hours where we were and tell him I'm on my way up to see you guys. That's super funny. Yo, dude, how'd that work? He fucking basically, uh, dude, there's so many great bits. You know, one thing he said to me once, he asked me about Carrie Bradshaw. Who oh was, yeah. You told me about this. Yeah, yeah. I love this. He was like, do you know who Carrie Bradshaw is? I was like, I don't. And he laughed at me. He was like, you don't know who Carrie Bradshaw is? I go, do you know who Terry, Terry Bradshaw, Bradshaw is? is? And he was like, is that Carrie's uncle? I'm like, no, it's not. But that was the whole show. Yeah. But I loved, I loved, uh, it's one of the things that, not only do we have, have a good person, a good uh, relationship, but like me and you, man, we have different points of view. Yeah. But also at the same time, with the different points of view, the banter is so easy with him. Yes. He's so funny. Oh my God. I love Ross. He's so, so fucking funny. Yeah, love him. Um, are you... Uh... Oh, I, I do have a question for you though, okay. actually. Last night I found myself kind of high in my living room. Don't... That's beside the point. But I find myself singing cartoon theme songs from my, from my childhood just randomly. Like which ones? My big one, truthfully, is the Phineas and Ferb theme song. Wouldn't even know what it is. I know you wouldn't. I I don't know why, but that theme song also is just like, it's so good. But I could really like, I could sing it word for word for you 100%. I think if I was going to cartoon, now TV Yeah, do you have any, Do you have any theme songs that just pop into your head that you find yourself thinking? Well, if you were like first uh, cartoon is Animaniacs. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough. That one or Scooby Doo. Yep. Or uh, Powerpuff Girls pops in my head a lot too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of stuff that pops in my head. Uh, but those would be, but if you're talking about TV, like, uh, and I'm an old school dude. So right. Hawaii 5 0. The whole um, Hawaii Five-0. Okay. Happy days. Sunday, Monday, Monday happy Monday. days. Uh, probably friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cheers. And Fresh Prince. Good one. Those would be my five TVs. Anytime I think of like, I don't know, like if I'm thinking of like regular TV, it makes me laugh because I started watching CSI Vegas with Imam yeah. because we ran, I watched, we watched FBI that sh that show on CBS. I know all those things are like the same, but th that show we went through five seasons. Each had twenty plus episodes. We did it in two weeks. I might have to watch it. Should I watch it, dude? I, I don't know. I loved it. I love the actors in it are so good. Like the yeah. main the main characters. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Omar Zidane. They call him OA, and then uh, Maggie Bell are the two main agents. Both their actors super good. Hard to like a couple of them at the beginning, but the character arc is really good. The story behind each character is really awesome. There's a lot of like, you get a lot of character development throughout all the seasons as yeah. well. So it's not just like their FBI agents. You get a lot into each of their like a lot of insight into each of their lives as well, and a lot of their lives come into play with cases that they have. So like it it it's a lot of uh, different aspects and variables as well. Yeah. I really like it though. I, I really like the characters. I like the actors. I think it was casted so well, but we really enjoyed it. I, I was so, and also yeah, check that out, dude. Just each one's 40 minutes long. It's just, and there's five seasons, 20 episodes each. Just like a hundred episodes to just sit there and run through. It's fun. All right. It's I'm, fun. I'm, I'm, I might check that also, out. Also, another one, another, uh, another um, music song that goes through my head, Game of Thrones theme song. I, I didn't even know what that is. Ba -ba 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 -ba. 
Ba da ba 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 ba. What? What was that? It's ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 ba. What is Indi- that? That's Indiana Jones. Ba ba da ba. No 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 no. That's not it. Ba ba. Now I don't remember what it was. Ba 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 da ba. No, that's Indiana Jones. No, no, you get that in my head. I don't even remember what I was saying. That's what you did the first time. That's not what I said. That's exactly what you did. I'm gonna we're gonna play it back, and you just exactly what you did. Ba da 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 da. What was that? Oh, ba 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 da ba. No, that's not it. <laughs> is that greatest American hero? No. What is? Do you remember what it is, Matt? No, because you keep singing. No, is it a team? It might be a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. But we should have a theme song. Didn't we have someone who wrote us? Uh, Nate Rose. Yeah, Nate Rose wrote us a, an intro to this. We should use that. I thought we were gonna. Sorry, Nate. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll use it. That's a great idea. We should do. We should definitely have one, right? Yeah. Oh, and the and of course the Pokemon theme song. I want to be the fairy. Fuck is that? Theme. I love that. That is the worst. Don't you dare. That whole Pokemon you CD makes me want to jump out of a fucking window. Uh, I just love the 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 theme song, the intro. The worst song of all time. Disagree. It j- infuriates me to hear it. I'm, I can't wait to... I'm going to change that to my ringtone to wake you up on the road from now on with Pokemon. Dude. Oh my God. I'm going to write that down so I remember. The absolute... Gotta, and maybe it's because it just brings me back to having to listen to that fucking CD. Can I tell you what that CD did? The good thing it did? Yep. It officially... When we got done playing it, when you guys, because you guys probably played it 8,000 times. When you guys got done playing that, I officially changed the rules in the car as far as music. It was no longer you guys get to listen to, you pick songs, and then I, because what used to be, you would pick a song, Kate would pick a song. Trev would pick a song. I would pick a song. song. We rotated, right? Speaking of, Kate just texted us. Right. And um, I... I, I I was like, okay, this is not working for me anymore because you all have terrible taste in music. <laughs> Your taste in music is rotating between um, Pokemon, The Lion King, and, and Britney Spears. Yeah, Britney Spears, yeah. And so I was like, this is going to drive... And Radio Disney, which drove me fucking crazy. Yeah, so I can understand that. I officially said, you all can pick any song you want. And everybody picked... Out of my, and this is when we had CDs. Yep. You could look through the CD book and pick whatever you wanted. You picked Weezer a lot. That makes sense. You picked Say It Ain't So a lot. You picked Lenny Kravitz a lot. Bon Jovi? You have a bon, bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Uh, your sister picked a ton of Beatles. Shocker. Yep. And Trev. I don't really know what Trev picked. Yeah, he was a little all over the place. He wasn't as predictable as you guys. You guys were basically hammering out the same. Because you didn't have Michael Jackson CDs, did you? Of course. Did I pick those? I think no, I picked those. No, not, not that time. was the song I chose to put on your wedding CD. Yeah, which one was it? Smooth Criminal. That's right. Uh, um, you know, your brother's big into screen. We went to Cryo in Fort Worth. How'd he do? He did great, man. Yeah, I bet he did fine. And, and, um, but he listened to Screamo. Yeah, of course he did. That's what I, that, well, yeah, that's what I, that's what I put in there sometimes. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get the screamo part, especially because I can't understand a word they're saying. Can I be honest? I feel like it's just because he like that. I feel like that music connects to him in a lot because I feel like at some point in time, that's what he wants to do is just kind of to scream because I, based on his life and, you know, he's been in the army and the things he's seen. I bet you there are some points in life where he just wants to scream. Well, he was also in a screamo band, dude, in high school. Right. But you're not, I'm not, I'm. Oh, you I'm, mean just like I, as far as like. I'm thinking other than the fact oh, that got it, got it, got even. It. Even then, like as kids, we all have things we want to scream about and like let out, right? Mm-hmm. So like he found that as an outlook, but then also can still find a way to... Outlet, by the way. Outlet, yeah, yeah. sorry. Not outlook, outlet. But also a comfort for the emotions that he still feels on a daily basis. If he hears someone else screaming, he's like, well, if I sing along to this, I'm maybe he's just letting out a little bit of tension or pressure. That's interesting. I, I, I never, never thought of that. Maybe that's why a lot of people listen to it. But you know, he was in that... 
Dude. Well, his mind is also probably racing 100 miles a minute just based on he was in, Trevor. You know, he, so he needs music to keep up that pace, I think. He, uh, the name of his band was so awesome. I don't even remember the name of his band. It was three guys and a girl. And I forget if they, they either, either named it Three and She, <laughs> like which that. I thought was awesome. I like that. Or but she, he was the lead singer. It was either Three and She or She and Three. But it was, I loved the name of that band, Three. It, what, it was so what cool. What instrument did she play? I forget. Guitar? I, bass? I, I don't remember. Or, did, Trev was a singer, though. Oh, I know Trev was vocals. I know that. Yeah, did she you, sing with him, you think? I don't know. I forget. It's Trevor, so, we're going to post this clip. Comment on it. Thanks. It's Appreciate so it. amazing that he, you know, dude, this guy, he went from straight iron in his hair and skinny jeans and the snake bite uh, piercings. To the military, like it, it. Yep. So, this is why. And then, and then, straight back to gauges and anime T-shirts right after. Yeah, this is why, <laughs> though. I think it's it, you never panic in high school if as a parent, because oh. it's gonna be f so much life left after that. It's just phases. Dude. It's also such a confusing point in everyone's yeah, life. But you're also let your kids try to figure out. Who they are. And what they like and who they don't like and all that shit, dude. You know what I mean? Yep. He, he, so he needed to go through that. Yeah. And he needed to do the army. Yeah. You know what I mean? Schedule. It's, he needed, listen, people just need, at certain times in their life, need different things. Yeah. But the, but the, I, I don't feel bad for the people who are changing. I feel bad for people who don't allow themselves to change. There's no oh, way. Right, 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 right. There's no way you're the same person you were 20 years later, 10 no. years later. You can't five be the same later. person you were from, even, even from that, you can't be the same person you were from 20 to 30. If you're the same person, then it's everybody, everybody has to grow as a person. You've had life experiences, you've seen things, done things that are hopefully opening up your brain and broadening your horizon. And, and I, I think one of the biggest problems we have today is that, like, take a politician, for example. You, you, you demonize them for something they thought 20 years ago. Yeah. Hey, dude, times were different. I think differently than I did 20 years ago. Yeah. I hope you do too. It, you shouldn't demonize somebody for changing their mind. You should, you should pat them on the back for growing. Right. And for learning. That's what we're supposed to do is listen to each other and be like, oh, that actually, you know more than I do. Or yeah. that changes my opinion. That is part of the human condition. I don't think it's admirable for people to be like, I've been the same for 20 years. Well, that's too bad for you, dude. Right. That yeah. is too bad for you. Yeah. You know and what that, I mean? That doesn't hurt anybody but you. We, what, you know what? Another problem, I think, in today's day and age is that we vilify people for behavior that we are okay with if somebody we know does it. Do you know what, what I'm saying? Uh, like, like, what do you mean? Like, you will excuse a certain behavior because you know somebody. You're like, yeah, but that's not. Oh, oh, and, well, can, and then somebody else. You see it in politics all the time right oh, now. I have a good, really, I have a, right? I have a good comparison you, for that. You see it in politics all the time right now, where whatever side you'd be like, that fucking guy did this, but you know, you're excusing, yeah, this behavior on this side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because like, you know the person. You can't. You can't. I, I know a lot of people who were who fucked and went crazy over the Monica Lewinsky Bill Clinton thing as yeah. they should have. Mm -hmm. But and I know you might say he wasn't president at the time, but like it, you still cheated on your wife. This dude did it with a porn star. This dude did it with an intern. One is not better than the other. Yep. But like I refuse to take you seriously if you don't feel the same way about both because yeah, you, the double standard is what a lot of this, a lot of the country's built on. There's a double, to, there can't be any double standards if you want us all to get along. And I think you actually look, the people on the other side, whether it's your family or your politics, whatever, aren't the ones that should be keeping you accountable. It's the people on your side. Yeah. Like this, it's, it's like when I, I don't expect if I'm fucking up, I don't expect to hear from a stranger, but you better tell me. Beth better tell me. 
I, like you expect to hear that. So this is why I, I think it's so bananas, you know, but I think those two things are really a bummer right now. Yeah. Like you, it's, you're not allowed to keep people on your team accountable. You just have to be okay with what yeah. they do. I think yeah. it's a little fucked up. Yeah. I agree with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, like the, uh, uh, the guy from that 70 show. That yeah, whole, Danny Masterson. Danny Masterson. Like, uh, but you know how Kutcher and Mila Kunis, they run that, the, the organization where they help yeah. all the kids who are being trafficked. But then it's a great example. But then after the during during Masterson's trial, they sent a letter to the judge asking for leniency yeah. because he's a good person. Yep. Like no, you, that that that's that exact same double standard. But that's that rich person double standard. Also, it's like no 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 no, it's not rich person. It's the but they're thinking that because that he's their friend, and but also not, it's a for me it is kind of that rich person standard because for me it's it's Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis using their stature to send that judge a letter because if it was a regular if it was just his mom, they'd have been like eh. But it, it was two other super famous people who were his friends who were like hey. He's a good guy. That's not who he is. Show a little leniency on him because he's our friend. Like that, that for me is still in that same era of rich person double standard. I, listen, dude, I, I think it's a great example. I don't agree with the rich person because they didn't send the letters because they were rich. No, 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 no. But the reason they felt that they could send those letters is because they weren't just regular people. I, I think he got... And I, I don't think, I don't know who else he got, but he got something like 15 or 20 letters and they weren't all from rich people. They were from other people in right. his life. But the only one that was, well, that's because that's the only one the public yeah. cares about. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But I agree with you. If it had been anybody but Danny Masterson or somebody they knew, and there's just a trial they read about some dude who was convicted of rape, they'd have been like, lock that motherfucker up. Yeah. hundred percent. But, but because they know him and they here's the thing dude i get it you know what they don't know danny masterson as a rapist they know danny masterson as their friend yeah so it's impossible for them to to put those two together it doesn't make any sense to them because they have tunnel vision they're not willing to see what's on the outside of it it's hard it's you know what it's like man a couple of years ago this dude named ryan lochte who's yeah, I remember this. You're talking about the Olympics? Yeah, just, and Ryan Lochte, man, God bless him. But one of my favorite interviews that Chelsea ever did, because he was not the brightest dude in the world. No. And, and no, the first question she asked him when he sat down, oh my God, this was so fucking crazy. He sits down and she goes, so do you think you're stupid? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. It was Fucking amazing. Holy shit. But this dude was in wherever the Olympics were. Brazil. And he and his friends were caught peeing outside in a gas station. Correct. And everybody went crazy about fucking American and this dude and rich kid and all this stuff. And the truth of the matter is, every I, uh, guy I, I know I pee outside. has peed outside drunk on something. Yeah. And yeah. so this doesn't... It, it, that in itself is... And people are like, it's privilege and he's an American. And, and dude... Somebody else peed on that wall a week earlier. Yeah. Except his name wasn't Ryan Lochte <laughs> and he wasn't a rich, dumb, white American. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so like, and I, for me, I was like, dude, I've known, I don't know him, but I've known a ton of people, including myself who have peed on a gas station wall or maybe been drunk and ripped a poster down. And like, I peed outside like two days ago when I went out to dinner with Rich. But when you didn't know him, you fucking vilified him. And the people who did know him were like, he's just drunk dummy. Yeah. Right. So that's like, 100%. that's that. But I agree with you about that with Danny Masterson. They, they for sure. Double standard. They just, they double, could not see past. Double standard. What, yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't live by that. You can't live by that. Well, you just excuse things. You excuse but behavior. Right, that's what I'm saying. You can't live like that. Yeah, you no. can't live excusing other people's behavior because they're your friend. Okay. Like that's, but here, okay. Let me ask you a question. That's not okay. Let me ask you a question. Say I commit a crime. I'll see you when you get out of jail. For real? Depends on the crime. What's your crime? I'm going to tell you something right now. Double standard or not. You commit a crime. Your mom commits a crime. Your brother commits a crime. Your daughter, my, my daughter, like your sister commits a crime. We're going to Mexico. We're ride or die. Oh, we're just on the run? Listen, dude. Fugitive? If it's between you spending 
Now, if you murder, how much time we talking? If like, you murder somebody, no, you got to let me serve that. You up. You got to go to jail, unless it's self defense. Then we fight it. Yeah, yeah. But if you told me, hey, dude, this dude jumped me and whatever, I'm believing you. Mm-hmm. But if you like, I don't know, tax evasion. Well, we're definitely <laughs> skipping town. <laughs> Fair but, enough. But but like but yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could. I don't know. I, 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 I would like, honestly, I would like to think that I would do the right thing, but I, I don't know, dude, if it was between me going to jail, you going to jail or us going on the run and, and me risking me going to jail too. I think, I don't know that I could, I don't know if any of you went to jail. I don't know. I, here's the thing. I, I don't think, know how I, I, I think, handle that. I think you have to let that person go to jail. So you're not endangering the rest of the family. Because then if you go on, if we go on, let's say, okay, say we're on the road, okay? Say you and I get involved in some sort of something, right? Hubbub. Crime happens. You and I are the only two people who know what happened because we're the only two people left. Are we, uh, and you and I are going on some like Bonnie and Clyde running shit. Like what, like what, what is, is the best way? If we run, we put everybody else at risk. How so? We just run. Depends on the crime. If we got involved in some hubbub and people know who we are, but then also know the family, unless we give ourselves up, you know, I'm thinking like some taking shit. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of FBI also. My brain is fucking... I don't know, man. You <laughs> Dude, know, my, my brain is I so d- everywhere with all the like hostages I and had, like what I do and all that. Yeah. I had to visit, you know, your Uncle Jonathan in jail. Right. It was tough, dude. I haven't had to visit anybody in jail Yeah, yet. it was tough. Thank God. It was tough. And I was like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want, I it, honestly, if I went to jail, I'm not sure I would want any of you coming to visit me. I probably would I'm not saying in a bad way, but like, I think it would be too much for the both of us. I, I would take phone calls. I do phone calls, but I, I think coming into the prison would be a lot. I don't know. I would have to ask somebody who was in prison, but it seems to me like it would be tough. It would be easier just to try to forget that life hundred percent, and put your head down and just serve Get the through time. It. Yeah. I, I would really love to talk to somebody. Can't really imagine either of us going to jail. The only thing I can imagine myself going to jail for is drug possession. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, me too. That's really the only thing I could think of. Me too. I mean, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine at this point in time any other thing that I would be putting in jail I, for. I would think also for me, like, I don't know, because there's been times where, like, like when McKay and I have been out, or other people and I have been out, and we see girls getting harassed, where we're like, hey. Y'all should y'all should back the fuck off and leave these leave these girls alone. Yeah, that's not, uh, you're not going to jail for that. If we get we've almost gotten in fights because of it. Yeah, don't get in fights anymore, dude. It's not worth it. I'm not trying to get in fights, but like if someone takes a swing at me for sticking up for someone, yeah, we're, we're throwing hands. Yeah, but like yeah. that has yet to happen. I'm just saying that might be the only other thing that I could see happen. Is like everybody in that brawl gets mixed up and then gets cuffed. And dude, we, the only we, time I've been cuffed was though drug possession. So I can't. <laughs> me, your mom, you. We're getting in a car and we're taking a fucking run to the border. I'm in for that. Yeah, dude. We'll, we'll cash out. Get all the money out of our bank accounts. And just live as long as we can in Mexico. Yeah, we'd have to get rid of all... I mean, but the passports... Won't the, like, here's the thing. If we go on the run... Uh, you don't need a pass, short of passport to get into Mexico. Just to get out. What about ID around? Like going to buy shit and like... Yeah, we'll just get a Mexican ID. What, what do we that need? How that to, works? Let, let me ask you a question. You've been to Mexico. When have you had to show your ID? When I was 16, asking for beer. Are you 16? Nope. Are you, the only time you got to show the ID is when you come back across the border. That's fair. That's you know? fair. And yep. I could use my 20 years of Spanish. Bueno. Hola. Bueno. Como esta? Uh, Donde esta la biblioteca? Where's the library? Yeah. Why do you want to know that? No, I, La, La Biblioteca is my favorite Spanish word. Oh, it is? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why. I just love saying it. La Biblioteca. That's a good one. Yeah, I like I, it. I like that em, embarazado means pregnant, not embarrassed. That's misleading. I think that's true. I could be wrong, and I could be telling people that I'm embarrassed. Show us pregnant. When I thought I was saying pregnant. I've never told anyone I was pregnant before, though. I hope not. I've never been pregnant. I hope not. No, I don't know if you know this. I do remember seeing you in the hospital, dude, as a baby, in that giant Box. Head, head of hair you had oh. with like that Eddie Munster forehead, like this big. Oh. 
You had like this much forehead and then hair. Nice. You and just like long, thin legs, nice. long, dangly arms. I got I got long appendages. Yo, dude. I remember driving up because you were in Seattle and I was in California. Uh-huh. I've told you this. Uh-huh. Oh, you right. have told me this. I don't need to tell you again then. Nope. But it was great. I just, do remember just like I don't need to hear that thriller story ever I again. I do remember though, on my pager. Because you came a couple days early and on my pager, I just remember Malia was your biological. Mm -hmm. She just played me. The pager was just you crying. And then they just played sound. Cause I woke up. Wait, like did they said, I called in, you call in. Okay. Can you, can you explain to me what a pager actually is? The pager would tell you either a number to call or you could call in and get a message. Oh. And it was just like a little clip on there. Got it, got it, And it, it would go it. off and you'd look at it and you'd be like, am I going to make a call? Could you send a text message on it though? Like technically? I guess. If you can type numbers, could you type letters? I get No letters. Numbers. Okay, so it was just numbers. Yeah. So you'd only get a pager for a number to call. Yeah. Number to call or like a voicemail. You could check your voicemail. But how would you get somebody's does each pager have its own number? Yeah. Okay. So it was like a cell phone, but not. Yeah, yeah, because you couldn't call on it. But everybody had a number. Was it like a nine-digit number or a ten-digit number, or was it just like a regular? Yeah, yeah, it was a phone number. Matt, did you have a pager? How old are you? You didn't have a pager? Oh, late adopter of cell phones, yeah. we, Dude, Joe Diaz had a pager until like last year. <laughs> This dude kept his fucking pager. Yeah, he probably he probably uses his pager for uh, separate business, though, is what I would do. No, dude, he just hated talking on the phone and he didn't want to call you. You, you always told me he would never answer a text. He would always say, if you're going to text me, might as well call me. Dude, he, he just recently started answering texts. Thank God. But if you sent him a text, he got fucking living. Hey, fucko. Hey, fucko. You can't fucking call me. You just give me a phone call. You fucking momo. <laughs> Um, all right, everybody. Uh, Hit me. All right. Yo, comedianjoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. By the time this comes out, we'll be in Europe, right? Yes. Yes. I don't know where in Europe we'll be, but we will be in Europe um, by the time this comes out. Uh, comedianjoshuaavgen.com for tour dates and tickets. Joshua Comedy on all platforms. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Twitch.tv slash Youthful Wolf. You know the whole fucking deal. Um, and yo, after this week, this week that I have left before I go to Europe, probably going to get a couple streams in before we get out of here. Yeah, um, guys. And, and I, I'm going to be live streaming almost. Well, I'll already be in Europe, so no need to announce that. I was going to say I'm going to be live streaming every day. Oh, yeah. No one's going to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, thank you guys always for tuning in. Tell a fucking friend. Um, and what? next week on my birthday, we will see Chris Angel. Yes. So I don't know when we're going to be able to talk about that. Maybe we'll do a live from Europe. What day is Chris? We we could do Thursday, October 19th. uh, So it's a Friday. Then there's the 20th. We have two days before we leave. We could just like do an at home podcast if you want. We can just talk. Okay. Let's talk about it. But thank you guys all for tuning in one more time. Um, And as always, tell somebody you love them. Do something nice for someone today. We'll see you next time. All right, everybody. Love you. Later.